the thing to note today is the use of mudras, mantras, and meditations. Now, last week, um, some of you were here for the puja, and it was a bit of a guided meditation as opposed to me just doing the puja and us all sitting in you know, silent meditation. And note that last week's kind of sort of you know, guided meditation was around what in the tantric tradition is considered the very heart of the worship. So in this ritualized art and science called puja, this art of ritual worship, to various aspects of consciousness called deities or what have you, there is in the centerpiece of this ceremony, a technique, a meditation, a practice, it's called bhuta shuddhi. And last week we described it to some extent, like bhuta meaning either element or individual. It can be used to mean a person like a jiva, or it can mean elements. And shuddhi, like shuddha means pure. So shuddhi means purification of. So bhuta shuddhi then is the purification of the elements, or the purification of the individual, or you could even call it a shodhana, a, a, a refinement of the individual. Why do we do it though? The idea is that life ought to be a kind of unceasing flow state. That's the, the point of puja is to create a flow state using intention and reverence and presence. And then we pray that this flow state overspills goes beyond just puja, where before it would just be confined to my, I don't know, 45 minutes or three hours in some cases of puja. In a tantrika's life, as they persist in puja, as they continue to do puja every day, um, there comes a time when nothing isn't puja or when everything is puja, you know? So the way they put flowers on the altar at the feet of the murti of the deity is the way that they serve food to their uh, wife, to their son is the way that they teach their children or something like that. You know, like the reverence and intention and ceremony with which they do puja does translate to a kind of reverence that you feel all throughout your day and the rest of your life. So you can see that this, the key to um, karma yoga, to doing work as worship is uh, mastery of puja. And the key to mastering puja is seeing it as a kind of uh, inspired action, karma yoga. Hello, Anna. Congratulations on the, the driving thing. Anna is soon going to be in the car doing the drive. Congratulations to you, Anna. <laughs> All right. So we'll do the puja. And uh, like we did last week, I will cue the Bhuta Shuddhi to some extent, as much as it's safe to do prior to initiation, et cetera, et cetera. We'll do some Bhuta Shuddhi. Today, though, before we do the puja, I wanted to say a few things about the mudras that we use. And particularly because some people had asked um, in the Discord Q&A about mudras you know now while i as i mentioned earlier while it is the goal to have the whole day be unceasing puja and unbroken uninterrupted worship of the divine as every person every animal every plant etc etc while that is indeed true mudras mantras and visualizations were traditionally in the tantric kind of scheme of things confined to the puja so very rarely would you be using mudras outside of puja mudras themselves um actually are featured very little in, in spiritual practice beyond puja. The point of a mudra was to direct attention in a certain way to achieve a certain end. So in this puja, for instance, you'll see matsya mudra, and that's used to purify the water. You know, so this is matsya means fish. So you got aqua turtle, you know? no, matsya mudra. It's used to purify the water. You have um, my favorite mudra of the puja, which I find is like, I think the heart of the puja mudras. And this is kurma mudra tortoise or turtle mudra. So the idea is when I make my hands like this little tortoise shape, it invites the mind to go inward like a tortoise withdrawing its limbs back into the shell. That's the vibe. So typically we use this kurma mudra with a dhyana mantra. A dhyana mantra is a Sanskrit invocation of a deity, but it describes the deity. So those of you studying puja, keep your ears peeled for that dhyana mantra of Kali today. You know, we're going to do the dhyana mantra here, here for it and see that the Sanskrit, I'll translate it loosely, but the Sanskrit of the dhyana mantra is just like describing the deity for you to visualize. It's for you to keep that image in your heart. Now, the entire quality of the puja depends on these two factors. One, bhuta shuddhi, to what extent you have purified and elevated the individual. So like we said last week, it's God worshiping God. To the degree that you've stepped out of the way, to that degree, the puja will be successful. You know, to the degree that you've induced a flow state. Next, the degree to which you've successfully visualized the deity and mentally worshiped the deity is the degree to which you will feel the living presence of that deity in the murti. 
So this is what distinguishes puja practice from like run of the mill idol worship because the idol, the murti is not in and of itself powerful. That's an interesting point. You know, it's not like it, it comes ready-made with like, okay, here is Kali. This bronze statue is Kali. No, Kali is here and Kali is everything. What makes that bronze statue a particular receptacle for Kali though? Well, I mean, that has to do with all the purification, certainly, but mostly it has to do with intentfully visualizing and then placing Nyasa, Jiva Nyasa, placing that Kali into the image. So to the extent that we use mudras, mantras and visualizations the goal is to invoke the living present a uh, presence of that deity and then evoke the living presence of that deity into the murti so that the deity can be worshipped now in some pujas you actually kind of destroy the image at the end of the puja so take for instance durga puja an image of durga of, of devi is made out of clay and at the end of the worship of the puja many days like five days of non-stop puja so if you thought these were long like durga puja goes long in east india so at the end of that puja they actually immerse the the clay image into the ganga they drown it and finish with it you know isn't that beautiful the idea is to kind of transcend the stuff it's not about the stuff but the stuff helps it's a tool so that's kind of what I wanted to say in response to that question about mudras, about mantras, and about visualization. Note that the root of the tantric tradition is puja, and everything else that you see, like all these other paraphernalia, they come from puja, and their initial application was puja. So just as a matter of curiosity, those of you who are interested in mudras, um, maybe this puja will show you like, oh, what mudras are being used where, etc. Okay, so let's do it. Let's have our puja. I'm just going to...